Hey, good morning, guys. Josiah here at Easy. A quick walkthrough video of the Weiss Wave Indicator that's available on our website. Uh, I released the first version of this quite a while back. I've never actually sat down and done a full walkthrough of it. I've had several requests for that, so that's what I'm doing today. Uh, and so let's just dive right in. Um, first of all, this set comes with several different items, which you can see on the website. Uh, there's a column that's included, which shows you the kind of the the current direction of the swing and whether or not today is a breakout or a breakdown of a prior pivot. Um, it includes a scanner to look for breakouts of prior pivots. Um, and then the indicator itself actually comes with um, three different functions, which you might not expect in just a normal Weiss wave indicator. It comes with the, the Weiss wave, which is essentially the cumulative sum of all volume traded during the course of a swing. Uh, but then it also comes with ORD volume, or um, you can think of that instead as uh, the Weiss wave divided by the number of bars. So essentially you get an average per bar volume during the course of a swing. Uh, and it, it uh, calculates that for you. And then it also comes with just the normal volume uh, on raw, you know, per bar volume on the bottom. So you can save space and only, you know, and not display your normal volume subgraph if you choose not to. And it additionally comes with a objective trend identification function, which allows you to see um, what the trend state is based on how many higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows we've had. Uh, and how clear that information is and so forth. So uh, there's at least three different functions there that um, are included in the indicator set in addition to the breakout uh, column and the breakout scan that comes with this that uh, helps you find pivot breaks. Um, so today I'm just going to go through the indicator real quick. It comes with two indicators, the upper price graph study which you can see here on the price graph, and then it comes with the lower subgraph study, which is kind of the Weiss wave and ORD volume combo without the uh, the trend identification. Now the, the trend bubbles and everything here, I know this can be a little bit crowded and look a little bit much. Uh, you can actually turn off any of these that you don't want. Uh, you can, uh, and any of these functions that you are not interested in, you can simply disable uh, in the indicator if you're not, uh, wanting to actually take a look at those you can you can just kind of break it down to the bare bones of what you're actually looking to use with it um, but i'm going to walk you through each in individual kind of function here so the upper indicator um, the first thing you do is uh, define your pivot points or define your waves uh, and to do that you kind of have to zoom into uh, you know, a specific fractal level of the price graph. You know, prices oscillate up and down and uh, on all different time frames. So you have to choose kind of what uh, ha what uh, significant level of swing or what, what level of swing is going to be significant enough to show up for you on your, um, on your study. Uh, the, the Weiss wave graph and the Ord volume graph and everything it's based on uh, the logic that's included in thinkorswim in the zigzag high low indicator so if you're familiar with that you already know how to define these pivot points uh, if you're not familiar with that you can actually just go into your studies and type in zigzag high low and you can take a look at that study itself and see the settings in there and play around with it and, and see if you can find settings that you uh, are that you like that uh, you think finds the pivots that you're interested in trading based on and then you'll know if you can find it there that you'll be able to apply that to the Weiss wave indicator and <clears throat> and be able to uh, use it in the same way. Uh, the Weiss wave is based on the same logic so um, you'll basically just choose your high and low pivot prices. Uh, you can base these on the closes as well if you want to base your pivots on the closing high and the closing low instead. Uh, but by default, it'll be set to the it'll be set to the high and the low of the price bars. Uh, then you choose your volume source. You can set this to normal share or contract volume here, which is the default. Uh, you can also on intraday charts only. You can set it to trade volume or tick count. And then there's a few other settings here that you can use for testing and uh, experimentation and so forth. Um, and then 
uh, just like in the zigzag high low, you're going to choose your percentage reversal. What what is the minimum percentage reversal that uh, it takes to confirm uh, a pivot point on the chart? And to that, you can add a price reversal amount or an absolute reversal amount. Uh, you can add a specific number of dollars or cents that you want to add to that percentage amount. You can also add a specific number of ATRs to that amount. Um, and you can define how long the ATR is calculated, uh, how many bars it's calculated over. An ATR, for those that aren't familiar, just means average true range, average true range of each bar <clears throat> over the course of the last 14 bars in this case. And this is saying two times the ATR. Um, so that's how that works. So you just choose uh, which of those that you want to activate and which ones you want to base your pivots on. Mine right now are only based on ATRs, two ATR reversals. And uh, you can also add ticks to the uh, percentage amount, a specific number of ticks. Um, on a futures chart, this might be 25 cents. On the price, you know, on a stock chart, this would be one cent would be the minimum tick size. So it just depends on what instrument you're trading, but you can add a certain number of ticks to the um, reversal size as well. Um, then we've got some settings that are specific to um, the just the Weiss wave and um, trend qualification portion of this indicator. So you can show the trend labels, uh, these labels up here, you can customize which ones of these are shown. And down here in the global section, you can actually choose the color that's applied to each of those labels, depending on what the trend status is and so forth. Um, but uh, you can turn on the trend label itself. It tells you what the current trend status is. The volume label tells you what the current bar's volume is. Uh, volume sum label tells you what the sum of the current swing, uh, the sum of the volume for the current swing is. And then the volume average label tells you the average volume for the most recent swing as well. And by the way, each of these settings has a little tool tip beside it that tells you what it does and a little bit more about how to use it. As far as the trend identification system, the objective uh, trend qualification, uh, this is similar to L.A. Little's work in his uh, two books about objective trend qualification and trading. Uh, but it doesn't use exactly the same logic as that because I found his logic to be a little bit unusual. Um, essentially, the, the logic um, in this indicator moves from a sideways state by default if you make a new high then that's considered a suspect uptrend. If you make another new high, then it's considered a confirmed uptrend. And the reverse is true on the downside. You would have a sideways moving to a suspect downtrend on a lower low. And then if you make a lower low after that pivot, then you would get a confirmed downtrend. And if you move from a suspect downtrend or a confirmed downtrend and make a higher high, then that would be instantly moving you back to the sideways condition where then you could move you know, to a different condition, either an uptrend or a back to a downtrend, uh, depending on your next pivot point. And then the same thing for uptrends and su suspect uptrends. If you make a lower low from one of those uptrends, uh, then you, that would move you back to a sideways condition. And uh, anyway, all of that logic is explained here in this little tool tip. Uh, so that's just a little sidebar or note about that. Uh, but that's how the logic works for the trend identification. Uh, next, you have the bubbles themselves that appear on the chart here, speech balloons. You can turn those on or off. These display uh, the current trend status as of uh, the pivot high or pivot low. They display the current pivot highs volume or pivot lows volume, the pivot bar itself. Uh, then they display the sum of all volume in that most recent swing and the average volume during that most recent swing. Um, and uh, so you can turn those bubbles on or off uh, using this setting. You can also choose whether or not you want to show test bars and test bars. Um, this is similar to what L.A. Little talks about in his books. Um, it allows you to, uh, a test bar is essentially a bar that's breaking a prior pivot. So you can see this particular bar here is breaking below this low pivot point here that happened previously. And so this is testing that level and seeing if, if a breakout is going to happen or a breakdown is going to happen. 
So what you can do in this case is compare the volume on this break, uh, this test bar with the volume on the uh, pivot bar and see which one is stronger. And in this case, you can actually see that this is a stronger volume signal on the test bar and it actually ended up at, uh, leading to a further downtrend in that stock. So that's how LA Little talks about um, uh, using volume in those cases, and this allows you to do that. I think Anna Kohling in her books also refers to a similar way of um, uh, analyzing volume at pivot breaks. So this allows you to do that type of analysis. Um, then, uh, so you can turn those test bubbles on or off with this setting, or you can turn all the bubbles off with uh, the prior setting, just the show bubble setting itself. Uh, and if you turn off the bubbles, you'll still be able to see the values with a text field here. Um, so this is a, a way of cleaning up your chart if you don't like the, the, the size of the bubbles. Um, I developed this as a second way of displaying some of the information um, and saving a little space on your chart and keeping your chart a little cleaner. Uh, this allows you to show either the current bar's volume the volume sum over the course of the wave or the volume average. Um, and you can only display one of them at each pivot point. Unfortunately, you can't do all of them at the same time. But this allows you to at least get one of them displayed, whichever one is most important to you. And uh, it definitely does save a lot of space on your chart. Um, the other thing that it allows you to do is uh, if you display these text uh, values here, you can divide the text. So, you know, in, on a stock like Apple like this, you're going to have, you know, potentially billions of shares on each swing. And so you might want to divide that value by a certain number to get a, a number here that's more manageable or easier to understand and, and takes up less room on your chart. And so this allows you to set what number that um, each of those values is divided by. And uh, so that helps save some space on your chart. You just uh, turn on the divide volume function here, type in a certain number. Right now I have it set to divide it by the, divide each swing by a million. And so this 5270 here means 5,270,000,000 shares were traded in the most recent swing up here. So that's what that means and that's how you would read it. And uh, depending on if you're you know, trading a micro cap versus you know, something like Apple, then this uh, division value here will probably need to change uh, and this will allow you to do that. Uh, the other setting here, bubble offset, uh, if you do have the bubbles turned on, uh, you can add spacing between the bar and the bubble to just give you some room to see it more clearly. Uh, if you're on a Forex chart, you know, this might be a fraction of a penny, whereas on a stock chart, it's always going to be multiples, you know, maybe you know, two pennies or something like that. So uh, I just allowed you to set what it, what you need it to be here in case you do trade Forex or futures or something like that, where it's a little bit more unique and, and you need to have some flexibility there. So anyway, that's a walkthrough of all of those settings. Um, you can, uh, if you don't want these text labels at all, you can turn those off by just unchecking the show plot box next to those. Uh, and a quick uh, thought here, um, the zigzags, you can turn that off as well uh, using the uh, zigzag plot here and just unchecking the show plot box there. And uh, I just wanted to mention that you can actually choose uh, you can actually use the zigzags or the, the uh, values here to keep an eye on what the trend state is without even having to have the label up here or any of the bubbles on the chart or anything because uh, it's color coded in the same way. So um, the, the gray area here shows you that we're sideways during that period. The dark green shows you that we're in a, uh, as of this pivot high area, we were in a suspect uptrend and then we broke down from that and it became a sideways trend. And then from there we broke down and it became a suspect downtrend. And from there we broke down and it became a confirmed downtrend. And then we started moving back up and that became a sideways trend here. And so you can see that uh, you can kind of read it without even actually having the, um, the uh, labels or bubbles available to you. And so you can turn off the zigzags even, and I'll show you that. 
If you turn off the zigzags, you can still even read it with just the values because the values are colored in the same way as well. So this allows you to really save some clutter on your chart if you'd like. You can e either use the zigzags themselves without the values or you can use the values without the zigzags uh, or you can use the bubbles either one or you can just use the label up here at the top and just look at the most recent swing move. Uh, so you have a lot of different options there as far as how you want to do that. Uh, but any of these that you don't want to see, you can just uncheck the show plot box. Then down here in the globals, you've just got the colors that you can assign to the labels up here at the top based on what the trend status is. So hopefully that makes sense. Then the, the lower Weiss wave indicator, it's all essentially the same, just a lot simpler. Um, you Since we don't have uh, all the you know, the values or the bubbles or the, the labels up here at the top. It's just going to be the defining your pivots and choosing your volume source, essentially. And so this is exactly the same as defining your zigzags, um, the way that we did in the Weiss wave upper and the way that you do it in the normal zigzag indicator. It's all the same settings. Um, you got your volume setting here, and it's going to be exactly the same as the Weiss wave upper indicator. And if you uh, want to turn off any of these plots, say you don't want to actually show the volume subgraph, uh, you can just turn that one off here. You can change how it displays if you want to use a normal histogram instead of a blocked histogram. Um, and you can change the colors and whatnot. So um, all of that's completely customizable. Um, the other thing I wanted to note is the data box. Um, so you can see as I mouse over here, it shows you the the average volume for the the current uh, swing. It shows you the current bars volume, and it shows you the sum of the volume or the cumulative volume up to that point in time during the swing. So all those values are displayed. If you um, so you don't actually have to keep these upper values here if you don't want them. You can actually just use the data box on the lower indicator and keep an eye on it from that. Uh, and so that's a way to save a little bit of uh, clutter on your chart as well if you don't want to use the upper indicator. Uh, if you turn off the floating data box here in chart settings, uh, the same information is displayed up here at the top of the subgraph. Um, and same thing up here at the top here. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That's an option available to you if you want to take advantage of it. So anyway, th hopefully this is a helpful walkthrough for you. It shows you kind of the functions that are available and the different features that you can uh, turn on or off. Uh, this uh, is just a walkthrough of the, the upper price graph indicator here, the lower subgraph indicator. Uh, I also have just a normal volume study down here, which doesn't come with this. This is just a normal volume study. And then I have my uh, my baby, the relative volume indicator down here at the bottom, which uh, is a separate thing as well. I just wanted to mention that that's, uh, those aren't included in this necessarily, but um, uh, those are available on the website as well. Uh, anyway, so hopefully this is walkthrough helped. And if you have any questions, just send me an email on the site. And uh, I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.